from Arkansas is one of the most outspoken critics of the Iranian nuclear deal. Cotton visited Israel this week and explained to us why he says this agreement may be one of the worst in American history. Senator Cotton, uh, thank you for being with us right now. It's great to be here with you. What do you see as the flaws in the Iranian nuclear deal? Well, there's multiple flaws in the nuclear deal with Iran. That's why I've opposed it so strongly. I think it's dangerous for the United States, dangerous for our allies like Israel, and dangerous for world peace. I would look at it in at least three different ways. First, in the immediate and non-nuclear dimension, uh, putting aside whatever will happen with Iran's nuclear program, we're going to give tens of billions of dollars in immediate sanctions relief to a government that is still the world's worst state sponsor of terrorism, that has the blood of hundreds of American soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan on its hands, that still chants death to America and death to Israel in the streets. Second, even if Iran follows the deal to the letter, they are going to be a nuclear threshold state in a mere 10 to 15 years, which as Prime Minister Netanyahu said is the blink of an eye in the life of nations. Mm -hmm. But third, Iran unfortunately doesn't have a reputation or history of following its international obligations. So they're likely to develop nuclear weapons capability well before the 10 to uh, 15 year period concludes. And how did you find out about the secret deals between the IAEA and Iran? And what do you think about the, the secret deal that's been released so far? So there's two secret side deals between Iran and the International Atomic Energy Agency. The first is a very limited uh, scope, which would deal with Parchin, a military base where we believe Iran tested nuclear detonators. The second is a much broader issue uh, regarding the past military dimensions of Iran's nuclear program, which is a critical baseline to inspect their program going forward. Not having that baseline would be kind of like starting a diet without knowing your starting weight. But it's not the IEA that has the obligation to disclose those mm -hmm. obligations, those side agreements to us. It's the United States government that has the obligation because there is federal law that requires it. And the administration still to this day has not obtained those agreements. They have not provided them to the Congress or the American people, even though they're not U.S. government documents. They weren't obtained through sensitive, clandestine sources or methods. And Iran knows what it agreed to. Mm -hmm. I think the United States government should obtain the agreements and they should release the agreements. The Associated Press reported a couple of weeks ago what purported to be the content of the Parchin Agreement, which is again the more narrow and limited agreement, which would essentially allow Iran to inspect itself, to take its own environmental samples, to do its own video and its mm -hmm. own uh, photography. That's kind of like letting an NFL player take his own drug test at home and mail it in to Roger Goodell at NFL offices so he can establish his eligibility. Why is this so significant and important to the American people? The nuclear deal itself is so significant because of the nature of the Iranian regime. There are plenty of countries in the world that are nuclear threshold capable. Japan is probably the best example. The American people don't worry about Japan and its nuclear power program because Japan is a peaceful constitutional democracy. Iran, however, is run by radical clerics who continually chant death to America and death to Israel in the street, led by their national leadership. They have the blood of hundreds of Americans on their hands from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. They continue to try to kill Jews all around the world, not just in Israel, but in places like Bulgaria and Argentina. And they are destabilizing the entire Middle East, fomenting terrorism in Lebanon and Gaza, also uh, propping up Bashar al-Assad in Syria, supporting a Shiite insurgency in Yemen. We're going to give them tens of billions of dollars. We're going to lift sanctions on their oil and other tr uh, economic transactions. We're going to lift the conventional arms embargo and ultimately we'll even lift sanctions on their ballistic missile program, all the while allowing them mm -hmm. to develop their nuclear program. So what does that mean? That means that in just a few years, Iran's going to have a stronger, more resilient economy that can withstand future sanctions if they cheat on a deal. They're going to have a stronger conventional army and they're going to uh, be on the verge of nuclear weapons capability. Do you think this deal could lead to war in the Middle East? I think this deal is actually more likely to produce a war than it is to deter a war, which is the exact opposite of what President Obama intended. Just like I think it's more likely to lead to nuclear proliferation in the Middle East rather than avoid nuclear proliferation in the Middle East. Again, the opposite of what President Obama intended, mm -hmm. in part because it shows that the United States is not willing to play our traditional role of being a force for stability throughout the region. Mm -hmm. And we are, we are encouraging other countries like Saudi Arabia or the United Arab Emirates to take their own path, to perhaps get their own nuclear weapons, which is what some leaders uh, of those countries have suggested publicly and many have suggested privately to me and other members of the United States Congress. Mm -hmm.
Senator Cotton, I appreciate your time and great to Thank be with you. you. Yeah, great to be with you. you.